Tua had a good day for having a month layoff. My goodness, you know, it just seemed like yeah. they didn't miss a beat. Uh, but unfortunately, it's not enough in the end last week as the Cardinals kind of nip them at the end with a game-winning field goal. Uh, let's start with the positive first here, Cam. What's, what's going on with the offense? Do they feel they have all their ducks back in a row? Yeah, the offense looked like a lot of what we saw last year, actually. It was the career, I mean, the season-high points for them. So they played well offensively. Offense wasn't the reason they lost that game. Uh, Tua looked back in sync. It was an offense that for the last five or six weeks didn't have any rhythm, didn't have any uh, smoothness in their operation, and they got their pilot back, and it looked like it it added juice to everybody. You know, Devon A. Chan had a great game um, through some of the lanes that Tua was able to open up in the passing game. Tyreek had a better day, too, and uh, for the encouragement of fans, Tua slid and got the biggest cheer of the day when he slid in the open field after a run. So offense played well enough to win. The defense just uh, was the group that let him down last week. Yeah, and, and certainly the injuries have played a part in that. Give us an idea of what is that going to change on a week-to-week -week basis now because of the injuries guys are up and down out of the lineup. But how's it look for this week? Yeah, the two guys I'd keep an eye on most is Zach Sealer, their defensive tackle, uh, and their safety, Javon Holland. So Sealer fractured a orbital bone in his eye and practiced last week, um, was actually in pretty rough shape. He won't need surgery, but he missed last week. He's iffy for this week. Um, it may be a situation where it's, you know, just tolerable. Can they put something where it doesn't get worse towards the end of the week? But he didn't practice today. Um, so he's going to be a guy that's probably close to a game time decision. But I wouldn't be surprised if, if he misses this week as well. And then for Holland, Holland suffered a knee uh, injury last game um, and didn't return. So um, from what I understand, nothing serious for Holland, but it may be a situation where he needs a week or two to be closer to himself. So uh, McDaniel said he didn't rule him out, but I'd, I'd probably consider him on the on the less optimistic side of 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 up in the air for for Holland. So that's two key defenders for the Dolphins. Javon Holland's their best safety in the back end. Uh, Zach Sealer's their best defensive tackle, and they're already down a couple of cornerback depths. Uh, guys and, and Storm Duck and Cater Co. So uh, definitely a banged up defense. And we'd even mention some of their pass rushers. You know, they yeah. lost Jalen Phillips earlier this year. Bradley Chubb still not back. They're one of the worst pass rush uh, teams in the league. So uh, Bills are definitely getting them at a good time. <laughs> yeah, because right, right. I was, I was going to ask you about that, Cameron, because, you know, you look at some of their defensive numbers, you know, for the first seven games, and, and it's pretty good. I mean, they're a top 10 yeah. total defense, they're number two in the league on third down. The fifth against the pass, um, you know, and we're watching highlights of last week's game against Arizona, and Harrison and McBride are going off. I mean, they're both over 100 yeah. yards, and I was like, whoa, wait, that, that's, not, that's not adding up with the numbers, and, you know, I, I'll get a look at the film a little bit later this week, but um, is it primarily because of all the losses due to injury, they just can't match up? Is that, is that the issue at hand here? It was a part of it. I'd say for this past game, Kyler played a phenomenal game. Like that was one of the best games I've seen Kyler play as a pro. And one thing the Dolphins really struggled with, I was at the game last week. They couldn't corral him. Like he was a lot of times where they had him right in his grip and he would scramble around a little bit and extend plays and, and beat him. So it wasn't like the secondary was just getting sliced and diced, you know, quickly. It was one of those things where Kyler extended plays and made plays. And of course, Josh can do that better than uh, I think any quarterback in the league. And so that presents another challenge for them. Um, and Josh has had a lot of success against Miami. So I think one thing that stood out when I was watching that game, Jalen Ramsey played a lot more slot um, than he had been in previous weeks because of the injury uh, injuries to Storm Duck and Cater Kohu. And it put their new their younger corner, Cam Smith, who just came off injured reserve in a situation where he was getting exploited a little bit um, on outside coverage. So I think that's definitely something to keep an eye on. Both of those same corners are still injured. If you got Jalen Ramsey in the slot, then that opens up an outside lane for someone to eat. So that, along with the lack of pass rush and just poor tackling for them, I think really um, was the story of the game. You know, that defense, like you mentioned, had been carrying a team, uh, trying to keep them afloat while Tua was out, but um, they did not show up uh, last Sunday. How good, how well can they flip that switch to start depending on, a def on their offense to kind of, you know, and we saw it all last year. I mean, they led the league yeah. in big plays and, and, Oh, passing, passing the whole up, thing. Yeah. I mean, it, how close are they and how easy is it going to be to flip that switch and say, okay, we're going to play this a different way against this version of the Buffalo Bills? 
Yeah, they'll have to because the Bills are going to score on them. Just the way these teams are built, the Bills are going to score. I think their offense definitely looked very encouraging this past week. And honestly, I was more encouraged with the run game than even the pass game because even at a lot of their peaks last season, they've been able to run the ball effectively. And there was periods even through their losing that they were running the ball well, and but teams were starting to load up in the box. And so it was more attempts than, than yards per carry. This week, they were able to have big plays in the run game. And I think that's when you're allowed to um, have a little bit more chance to take those deep shots to Tyreek and Jalen when teams have to creep up in that box a little bit so Devon Achan Raheem Mostert and, and their rookie Jalen Wright um, are going to be a huge factor in this game they've got to get those guys going and have any uh, shot on Sunday yeah take that a step further I mean Achan has been productive against the Bills um, even up here last year as a rookie uh, he was yep. going up and down the field on those guys he is a problem uh, and then Jalen Wright I see is getting a lot more pub people think he's played well enough to earn more playing time the rookie out of Tennessee what what can you tell us about his development here through the first half of the season? Yeah, I think you will see him play more. I think he's going to increase his reps as time goes on. Mike McDaniel and their scheme is really a trust-based offense. So I think it's fair to say early in the season, there's just a lot more trust for the veterans, you know, Raheem Mostert, Jeff Wilson, and even Achan over a rookie who, you know, may not know protections to the full way, may not know every route. And so now we're in the middle of the season. I think he's caught up on his knowledge, and you've seen really good plays from him in spurt. So I think you'll see a three-headed bat field for them where you see a chan probably still leading the team in touches raheem Mostert get a little bit more of those short yardage and goal line carries and then jalen wright sort of that x factor where he can pop some plays with his speed um, but also run inside the tackles as well so they want to to this team as much as we talk about to a tyreek and waddle they want this team to be run first yeah, well, you can say that, but with Tua, Tyreek, and Waddle out there, I mean, we yeah. heard we heard Tyreek before the game this last week that, like, hey, we're back, baby, let's go. <laughs> and and he played like it. I mean, it, it it really did seem, Tua seemed like his old self when he stepped back in the pocket last week. Yeah, he did. They were one of the most penalized teams in the league, and a lot of it was pre-snap motion penalties and little things like that that go around their, uh, their operation. And a lot of it happened when Tua was out. And so once you start to get back into the cadence of this offense, it's a timing-based offense, you know, that's one of the things Tua does really well. He's going to be on time. He's going to line people up. People are going to know where they're supposed to be in the right place. And there just felt like a comfort. It felt like, you know, riding a bike again, even though Tua had been out for six weeks, uh, everybody got back into a rhythm. And I think even this week, they'll even reach a, a different level of comfort. So I wouldn't be surprised if – if this game is close and they're able to score some points um, on the offensive side of the ball because of some of the factors that we've mentioned, I just don't know defensively that if they can slow down uh, that Bills offense. Cameron, how are the Dolphins as an organization looking at the playoff race? Obviously, two and five is not where you want to be, but the rest of the AFC East languished with them besides the Bills. So yep. you can very easily finish second in this division. If you get a head-to-head -head win against the Bills, you can make possibly make it even more interesting than that. What is their outlook in light of how things have shaken out during the time that Tua was on IR? Yeah, they're trying to stay optimistic. I think the message has been like, keep the faith, we're still in it. Um, a lot of the players have pointed to 2021 season where they started one and seven and they won seven straight games. And, you know, a different coach, different style of team, but they're using that as kind of a, a springboard of like, hey, we can still do this thing. Now it starts for them very soon. Like they've got to start winning games um, quickly because as we look at this division standings, the Bills are on pace to clinch division before Thanksgiving, you know, like just the three and a half game gap, what they hope was theirs is, is seeming to go out of grips. And then you start to have to play a, a wild card tiebreaker situation. So the problem Miami has compared to 2021 is their schedule is a lot more difficult the second half of the season than it yeah. was the first half of the season. So they may have wasted the opportunities they had to, to build a lead a little bit. So nobody's writing their obituary yet, but I'd say that this is going to be a difficult, difficult challenge. As you look there, you know, you got bills this week, but even as you start to get to Thanksgiving and on, you, that's a lot of really talented teams on that back end that they've got to play. So um, I think that we're going to learn a lot about the Dolphins this week, how much fight they have, you know, going on the road against a team that's owned them. How much are they going to fight after, you know, having a really tough period? I think you'll see some out of them. I just don't know if defensively, like I said, they can keep up.
What has been the rhetoric coming out of Mike McDaniel? What has he said to the media and, and thereby also, also to his team? Yeah, Mike has really told people that, you know, he's used the phrase adversity as opportunity a lot. And he said, hey, look, this is what I get paid to coach here for, you know, not for the handshakes and the the smiles and the good vibes It's how to get your team out of this period. And um, the Dolphins, let's keep it real, had huge expectations. They have a lot of talent on this team. They paid a lot of people, including their quarterback, including their head coach and their top two receivers. And so the expectation was not only for them to make the playoffs, it's to win a playoff game. So I can tell you there has been a lot of chatter outside of the building of like who's being held accountable for this. And it's tough to hold anybody accountable when you, you know, you paid everybody. Um, that being said, they still have an opportunity to turn this around. Um, they certainly have the talent. And I think that's probably been the most frustrating thing. Mike has told these guys all the time. It's, it's, it's through your, your execution and he's took some blame himself. Um, but the reality of the situation is they're too talented to be two and five uh, with all the stars they have on their team. So it's really an onus on those guys, the guys who are paid the most to, to step up and lead them out of this deep hole. And um, a lot of the guys say they think they can do it. So, like I said, I'm eager to see what level of fight, what level of grit they have, because that's been the question mark of this team. It hasn't been their talent. It's been their physicality and their grit. Cameron, thanks for the time. As always, we appreciate it. You're going to be up here for this one this weekend. You're going to be elsewhere I will. on assignment. I will. I will be up there. And so uh, hopefully I see a bunch of Bill's Mafia and uh, <laughs> looking forward to getting some good food. Some, uh, There'll good be some there. Beef and some wings. 